Today's guest is one of the most fun and unique people I've had the pleasure of spending time with. She's creative, funny, super talented, and very smart. She's figured out ways to turn her passions into her career. She's someone I love to learn from and live through vicariously. I've had her on the show before, but I asked her to come back today to share her method for conducting paranormal research. By that, I don't mean paranormal investigation or looking for ghosts, but rather how she researches the haunted locations she comes across and writes about in her books. My special and repeat guest today on All Is Not Lost is Renee Harper, founder of Old Bisbee Ghost Tour in Bisbee, Arizona. Renee has been with the Old Bisbee Ghost Tour for over 15 years. She became interested in the paranormal as a young child because she grew up in a haunted house. Renee received her BFA from Otis College of Art and Design. While in college, she developed a love for ghost folklore after taking a fairy tale and folklore class. During her time in Los Angeles, she was involved in acting, dancing, and working in the film and TV industry before she began working full-time in the toy industry. Renee moved to Bisbee in 2007 to join the Boo Crew. After spending years collecting the ghost stories from Tucson, Tombstone, and Bisbee, Renee has authored the book, Southern Arizona's Most Haunted, and a few years later, released her second book, Paranormal Arizona. Renee is also an artist, selling her artwork, jewelry, and clothing line at Sweet Midnight. She has been given the honor by the Bisbee Chamber of Commerce as the only ambassador to the ghosts and spirits of Bisbee for her work in preserving their stories and history. Renee is known around Bisbee as Nay 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 the Ghost Lady and the Bisbee Unicorn. When not guiding the old Bisbee Ghost Tour or Paranormal Experience Tour, Renee can be found in her carnivorous plant garden, being creative in her studio, which is a vintage Cree camper she turned into a glamper, driving around town in one of her three hearses while singing show tunes, or traveling around the world. You might also catch her swinging from a trapeze or walking her three rescue dogs around the neighborhood. You can stay up to date with her many artistic endeavors and travels on her Instagram page. I extend another heartfelt thank you to Renee for joining me again on All Is Not Lost. I always enjoy hearing about her exciting adventures and her take on all things paranormal. I can't wait to have her back on the show to talk about her exciting trip to Key West and all the ghosts. I hope she's going to meet. Spirit, does it stay? Does it go? The fact is, spirit does survive death. Our loved ones are all around us. Love survives. Spirit survives. All is not lost. Welcome to the All is Not Lost podcast. Here's your host, psychic and evidential medium, Rianne Maldonado. Oh my gosh. So I'm back here with Renee from Old Bisbee Ghost Tour, and I'm so excited. And we were just talking how cool your background is Thank and you. that you live in a house which, with such cool stuff around. That's so fun. Yes. It's, uh, it's my behind me is my collection of mostly vintage uh, Halloween blow molds. So oh. there's some newer stuff, but a lot of them are, are vintage. Um, yeah. So do you go out and search for those or you just kind of pick them up on your travels? Usually um, we pick them up on our travels. Very rarely have I like gone online and found them. The one, um, let me move this, <laughs> the Dracula one right there. I found him on yeah. uh, Marketplace, on Facebook Marketplace. And it was such oh, a fun. steal. And I was like, okay. And it was local. So I just had to have that one. Yeah. Yeah. But, you can't yeah, usually, beat that. No. Usually we just kind of, my husband and I like to go antiquing and we'll just find them. And, and getting them home is very <laughs> difficult. But because, you know, they're I so can cute. imagine that part. Yeah, they're just. Yeah, yeah. And you and your husband. So, well, let me back up. The reason I asked you to come back on today, and I'm so grateful that you're willing to come back on the show, but I asked you to come on because you, to me, are the master at researching um, haunted locations. And, and I say that, let me, let me clarify for the listeners, because 
if I, like I did a Google search the other day for how to research a haunted location. And all that comes up is ghost hunting. You know how to go in there and look for the ghosts. And that's not what I brought you on here for today, because there's so many people, you know, that we can talk to that do that. But what I found value in with you, with your books is when somebody comes to you or you visit a purportedly haunted location, it's Mm -hmm. very important to figure out the history, what might be haunting it. We, we can have the ghost investigators, of course, confirm whether they think it's haunted or not, but really why, who, what in history happened. And that's the part of the puzzle that I'm missing. You know, like I've heard plat maps and, you know, go to the library, go to the historical society, all of this, but that's why you're here. But when I started to say you and your husband seem to take the coolest trips, but I think I asked you at one point, do you take these trips based on haunted locations or do you just happen to find haunted locations when you're on your trips, the chicken or the egg? Ooh, good question. Um, usually we find haunted locations when we're on our trips. Uh, we usually, unless it's a ghost tour that I want to take or it's a haunted location, like once we went up to, I'm sorry, my my dog is sleeping next to me and she's snoring. So oh, that's <laughs> adorable. That's okay. Um, we went to the Lizzie Borden house and we stayed there about seven or eight years ago. And we specifically went, we were doing a whole tour of, uh, of, (laughs) of the the East. And I specifically wanted to go to Salem and to visit Lizzie Borden and to stay at her house. So we kind of went out of our way to stay at the Lizzie Borden Airbnb on that trip. Um, And we went to Salem and stayed in a haunted house there because you have to. And so that trip was mostly on the Northeast. It was mostly to visit like haunted towns that I, you know, bucket list stuff for me. If that makes. Okay. Yeah. No, totally. Like, I feel like I'm at the point where I want to plan all my trips around haunted locations. Um, But you know, that's not always the case, but like, for example, next month, we're going to St. Louis for oh. a concert and Ooh, who are you immediately going to see? the you killers, me? the killers again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I of course immediately jumped online to find all the ghost tours while we're there, um, all the haunted restaurants we could go to. So the whole entire trip is now filled with what haunted yeah. stuff can we throw into the mix? <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's what we do. Yep. That's kind you of gotta, how we do yeah. it. Yeah. Well, okay. So that's good to know. And um, recently you were in New Orleans and I saw that you stayed in a haunted house. I know we're totally not talking about paranormal research, but we totally will. I want to know about New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans is like uh, my favorite place to visit. Um, I have friends there, so I like to visit my friends. And there's my kitty, Meow Meow. Um. And it is so, it's like going to a different country. When you go to New Orleans, it's like going to a completely different country. Uh, The culture is amazing. The people are amazing. Um, We went specifically to watch uh, Barkus and the Rolling Elvi in, um, and those are two Mardi Gras crews. Mm -hmm. And Barkus is uh, when people put their dogs and they make Mm -hmm. little floats with their dogs. It's the cutest thing you've ever seen. And then the rolling Elvi are like these guys and females, male and female, everybody mm-hmm. gets to dress up as Elvis. And but they're on like little scooters. Mm-hmm. So they roll around on these little scooters. It's adorable. And <laughs> this sounds um, amazing. <laughs> yeah. And uh one of our friends has an art retreat mm-hmm. and uh she wasn't using it. Uh so it's like 
Mm. It's a beautiful old building in the French Quarter that she like organizes art retreats at. And uh, she wasn't using it at the moment. And so she let us stay there. And it was, uh, it is haunted. Unfortunately, we didn't experience any hauntings. Mm. But I also was exhausted. <laughs> The entire time we were there, we were up at like 8 a.m., went to sleep at midnight. And so I was not, you know, if there were any spirits visiting us, I was asleep. Yeah. yeah. Or they were being very respectful of your need for rest. Yes. <laughs> and and the uh, home that we stayed at, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's not like anything you've ever seen. There's like a big great room that's like the living quarters. And then you go outside and then there was our room in back of like the great room. And then there's three flights of stairs to get to the other levels. So back in the day, it was probably uh, slave quarters. And so one of the rooms was probably used as like a kitchen. And then um, they probably lived on the upper floors or in the attic. And so our friend turned those all into like little rooms for her art retreat. And the only way I can describe it is like choppy because you have to go outside to get from one area to the next area. So I'm assuming that if the ghosts were there, I am sure they were off exploring. I mean, it was huge. It's huge. I can't even describe it. It's just huge. You saw the video on that I posted. Yeah. You can share that with anyone if you want, but it was just, it's very yeah. choppy and the, it just, I, I don't know. It was just amazing. It's amazing. It's an amazing place. Have you ever been to new Orleans? No, I, I can't wait. I would, I just, a bucket list thing. Totally. Okay. When you go, you let me know and I will tell you what you need to do <laughs> and what haunted tours to take. And yeah. It's, it's well, I think that's ideal because that's one of the places where as much as I want to go, I would not go without guidance from somebody who's been because I yeah. wouldn't want it to be a waste. I wouldn't want to, like I said, have it be a waste that I don't know the cool things to see the behind the scenes stuff, the right tours, the right everything. So thank yeah. you for the offer. I will absolutely take you up on it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's my so, home away from oh, home. Sorry. No, oh, I was just do you go there more. frequently? Um, we try to go at least once a year. Uh, we haven't been since COVID, but we um we actually drove cross country to deliver a coffin to our friend, and uh, so that was the last time we went. And okay, how often I'm sorry. do you hear that that you got to, to drive cross country to New Orleans to deliver a coffin? <laughs> and that's where we're going to pause, and I'm going to say we need to expand on this, Renee. <laughs> Delivering a coffin across the country to New Orleans to a friend. Talk about this, please. <laughs> okay. So I have a lot, like I have so many amazing friends in my life. And one of them worked on the set of True Blood. Remember the, the show True Blood? Okay. And he, <laughs> this is so funny. So he saved. Did you see the show? Did you watch the show? I don't want to ruin it for people that haven't seen it or watched it, but um, uh, go ahead. I want to hear. Okay. Tell me anyway. You want to hear? Okay. So the yeah. last, the last episode, Sookie kills Bill. Okay, and the coffin that she kills him in, our friend built and saved from the set of True Blood. So they actually, no used, yeah. So they actually used two coffins they used the regular one and then they used one they like built a second one that had holes in it and when she squished him with the stake they had some prop guy underneath with these bags of blood and he squeezes them so it looks like Bill explodes. <laughs> so, oh my god they're telling the secrets that's awesome I know yeah so we, um, he lives in LA and so he needed, he didn't have room for these coffins or whatever. And so we went out and we, and we have, we have hearses. So like, let's go get these awesome coffins, you know? And of course, I mean, we live in Bisbee, our house isn't huge. And I told my husband, Jimmy, I'm all like, why do we need two of these coffins? 
And Marita, our friend in New Orleans, she was opening a uh, vampire cafe. And uh, her whole thing is vampire. So she owns the boutique The Vampire, and now she has a vampire cafe in New Orleans. And I asked her, I approached her, and I said, listen, we have um, this coffin that it has this history from being in the movie True Blood. So do you want this coffin? And she was just ecstatic. She said, yes, absolutely. And Jimmy and I, we had to figure out how to get it there. And we decided <laughs> that the easiest and cost effective and funnest way was to drive it cross country in the hearse. and. We planned it for November of 2020, and of course, COVID happened, and we said, well, you know, my my husband already requested his time off work, and we said, let's just do it. And it was the most fun, and nobody was traveling, and so it was really, um, it was really quite pleasurable to, to, to be able to drive cross country and you know, we got great deals at hotels and, um, I documented it all and, and uploaded the videos to all my social medias. Um, and now the coffin is in new Orleans and she, Marita is actually opening, opening a apothecary and yeah, it was in her cafe for a while. And now she's opening an apothecary that, uh, I don't, don't quote me on this. It's on St. Peter's, I believe in New Orleans. And, uh, that's where the coffin is. So that's where it's going to go. And uh, yeah, we still have one of the other ones. You want to see it? I I do. Cause I was just going to say, Renee, you were like, oh my God, the coolest person ever. And I want a hearse and I want a coffin. And you know, if you ever come across some extras, I am first on your list. So (laughs) there's. There's the other one. There's Elvis, but there's the other coffin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How fun is that? Yeah. I have, I, um, in this room, wait, this is funny. Let me count one, two, three, four, five. I have five real coffins. Four usable coffins. Like if somebody died and needed a coffin, I have. Wow. Okay. So let me just say, I'm really bummed that we decided not to do video on this episode now because all our (laughs) listeners are going to be like, show me the coffin. You're going to have to take a a photo for me and send it to me. And that way I can like put it in the notes or something. (laughs) Can can you screen cap the video? And it's It's really blurry, but the the recorded one might turn out better. If so, I'll do that. Okay. So fun. Oh my gosh. I I can imagine that November of 2020, nobody's on the road. And all of a sudden, like a trucker pulls up next to this hearse (laughs) with this adorable couple in it and a coffin in the back. Can you imagine him getting on the radio telling everybody what he just saw? (laughs) That's the best. And the hearse, the hearse has a glitter top. So that just even adds to it. Oh God, you are so speaking my language, girl. We were brought together for a reason. My husband thinks I'm a total fruit loop, but wow. No, you're, wow. You're normal in our world. You're perfect. Normal. Perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So obviously we could do a whole episode on just talking about cool stuff, but do you want to share how, y- well, okay. If anybody opens your book, one of your books, I don't Mm -hmm. have them upstairs with me. I totally, it was a morning. Anyway, um, I read in the beginning, the woman who wrote your introduction or forward rather, which um, she talked about what, yes, what a great paranormal researcher you are. And that's what got me started thinking about it was, oh my gosh. Yes. Because I value, how do I say this? I value your integrity in the way that you do your ghost tour, you know, and I know that you put a lot of thought into it and you wanted it to be the best in the country. And I believe that it is. Um, 
So when I read this from her, you're very welcome. You totally deserve that. When I read this from Christy, I thought, if I'm going to ask anybody on this show to come talk about researching haunted locations, there would be nobody but you. (laughs) So how's that? (laughs) So yeah, how do you start? You know, where, where, take me from the beginning, like if you follow a checklist or if it's in your head and you just know what you're doing, or if you start one place and it leads to another, just tell me Renee's process on a haunted location. (laughs) So first and foremost, I interview people. So, uh, I will ask you, okay, so usually I don't like to, um, especially for my books and the tour, if you noticed, I don't do any, uh, personal property. So I don't do people's homes, for example, cause, uh, I think it is a violation of their privacy. So usually the places that I research are hotels, stores. Um, I mean, I've done research on Graceland, (laughs) you know, and, uh, I, I, you know, libraries, businesses. And the reason is because there's a lot of people in there that come in and out and they are the best ones to have experiences and stories. So if I interview one person and they tell me a story And they didn't speak to somebody I interviewed two years ago. And the person from two years ago has a very similar story with what they saw and experienced. Then I dive a little deeper and I'll be like, okay, so what's the history of this building? What happened here? Did anything happen here? Was it a house? Um, There's a story in, there's a home in Tucson and it used to be a private residence and everyone sees like, people coming out from the floor and it was very strange and that was the story we kept getting was like people I've seen people come out of the floor and it happened that there was an underground like cellar and the entrance to it was where the people were seeing ghosts come out from out of the floor so yeah so I the, the first and foremost is I interview as many people as I can And then I read, I'll always kind of go online and see if anyone's posted on any of the numerous paranormal websites out there. Um, Oh, there's one that I really like and I forget what it's called. Um, But it has, you know, if you have a paranormal experience, you can go on this website and, and jot it down and it keeps a record of it. And I'll go on there and see if there are any. And if there are, then I will go and try to do research on the building. Um, a lot of times people claim they're psychic or they're mediums and, uh, no offense to any of them, but I take everything that a medium will say with a grain of salt because I don't know how accurate it is. And if it's just them tooting their own horn or if they really are sensitive, and so I want to, I want to know like the facts, what happened here? What was the building originally? Did anybody die there? Um, and then I, you, you just piece it together. You try to piece the puzzle together as best as you can. And the cool thing about ghost stories, and this is what I love about it, is that there's no um, definitive truth. Everything is a theory. Uh, Like I could say that I see the ghost of Abraham Lincoln in the White House, but it's, 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 can you hear Sweetum snoring? Sweetum, yes, but it's adorable. I was worried it was my stomach at first, so I was so glad you said it was your dog snoring. (laughs) I'm like trying to get her to stop. And then my other dog is like, playing with my hand on this side of me. I'm like surrounded by my pets as I, as I prefer That's good. it. But what I'm saying is like, you can, you know, 20 people can see the ghost of Abraham Lincoln in the white house. And at what point do you say, okay, that was the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. How can 20 people see the same thing in the same location in the same place 
And even though he didn't die there, he doesn't have to die there, but his spirit can be there because that's where um, he spent, you know, he did his work. He spent his time, his dedication to the country. So I don't know if that made sense to you. I was kind Absolutely. of rambling. <laughs> No, you're no, you're totally fine. And I wanted to know your process rambling or not, because, you know, right now I'm studying parapsychology. And one thing I love about it, and it's very similar to what you said when you started, is without people's experiences, we have nothing to investigate. Exactly. Nothing to study. So you exactly. have to start with what people are saying, what people are experiencing, and then you go from there. Um, and later, if you remember the name of that website that you were talking about, where you can um, jot down if anything has happened in your location, uh, we can always put that in the show notes. I didn't even know about that because, again, this is all new to me. Um, do you do you do like I've seen kind of on TV? Do you go to libraries? Do you go to historical societies? Um, do you do any of that stuff? Do you look at maps? Yes. Um, usually, so in Bisbee, because, you know, I live in Bisbee, so most of my experiences happen in Bisbee. And we have a fantastic museum here, uh, the Mining and Historical Museum, where we met for the ghost tour. And uh, you can go in the back of that museum, and there's always a dose in there, and they will pull up any information you need about anything you need. So I could give them an address of a building and they will go and pull out anything they have on it. And then I can come back the next day and it's waiting for me. <laughs> they also oh, have that's awesome. A, it is. It's great. It's a great resource. We also, um, the museum also has a fabulous website and you can dive deep into old news articles on the website and old hauntings. Uh, believe it or not, there are news articles from the early 1900s that uh, that have, you know, ghost stories in them about stuff. That is so that, fun. Yeah, that people experienced in their homes, you know, and they're written um, very eloquently. It's really fun to read. Uh, and we also have, I live walking distance from the county buildings and you can go to the county and they have all the newspaper, um, all the newspapers from what, the 1880s and they will pull anything out for you and you have to sit there with like white gloves on and you can go through all the articles and yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's fun to do and it's fun to um, go through those old newspapers and read, you know, the old advertisements and stuff as well as, you know, trying to do research. You have just opened up a whole new world for me. Like I have this problem that I like too many things and I get oh, that's busy. Yes, I know. Yes. I know. I think we have this in common. So like I signed up for the one parapsychology class, right? When I'm running a podcast, I have five kids. I do my mediumship. I have all this stuff, but I had to go and, you know, take a 12 week class halfway through. I joined a second para parapsychology class. Um, cause again, you know, I just don't have enough to do. And, um, I am now interviewing for my hospice volunteer position. So that's exciting, but I keep making Ooh. this list of when I finish my 12 week class, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. Well, thank you now, Renee, because you've just added to my list of I'm going to go and start researching <laughs> haunted locations because I love old people. I love old stuff. And another thing that you mentioned made jogged my mind with something I'm learning in my classes is that a lot of the newer ghost hunters newer on the scene, I'm saying like within the last 20, 30 years, they uh, are a little misinformed on thinking that there's not a lot of research historically, that it's all very new. When in fact, like you're saying, these newspapers going back to the late 1800s, early 1900s, there are already at that point, um, journal articles on research on parapsychology, on psychic experience, ghosts and hauntings. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about going back and looking with white gloves and reading these newspaper articles of hauntings, I mean, this stuff really happens and yep. it's been happening for a long time and we can't forget yep. the history, the history, the people who share the experiences and then the history behind it. Yeah. 
and that's our our ghost tour is um most of the stories are firsthand accounts from people in Bisbee who experienced them. So that's what I try to focus on because um, Mm -hmm. I think those are the most important, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You can, you you know, you can say so-and-so said this and -and so-and-so experienced this and -and so-and-so's, you know, saw a vision of this. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you, when you interview them and you have the firsthand accounts, that is to me Mm -hmm. gold in absolutely paranormal research and doing a ghost tour without those again what do we have people's experiences matter and these things happen to these people for a reason it's impactful on their lives Mm -hmm. and let's face it it's entertaining um so it's it's fun to know but it's a great place to start now i asked you also do you look at are they plat maps? What there's certain kind of maps I hear people talking about where looking at um like the the lines of where something is and where something happened. Do you go that deep or is that kind no. of not that important? Okay. No. Like if it's a location, then I know the location. I don't need to plot you don't it need out. To dig into all that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why people do. I guess I should look into that, but I hear people talking <laughs> about, oh, pull the plat maps. I'm like, why? But okay. <laughs> so you, I know you're an expert on Bisbee. You've been there quite a few years now and you know a lot about it. Do you research other places in the country also? Like if you know you're going to visit one? Uh, yes and no. Um, so, okay. So for example, the place we stayed at in New Orleans I have a little bit of background on it, but not a lot, but it was a vacation, you know? Yeah. So, um, usually when stuff like, like if we're on a trip, I won't, I'll just go on the internet and do a quick, you know, quick Google search. What happened? And see what people are saying. Yeah. 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 Um, sweetums, my goodness, honey. (laughs) She's comfy. She's very comfy and I can't like wake her up. I'm trying to like get her to stop. (laughs) She's fine. We're making memories, Renee. We're making memories. You'll have to to include a picture of of her. Yeah. You're going to need a picture of her so people can see. But usually not. Not if it's like a vacation and we're there to have fun and I'm not doing a tour. I'm not writing a book about it. I just, you know. uh, But there's an uh, enjoying exactly exactly and and doing that research is work it's work so i don't want to you know spend my vacation no. doing all that stuff but yeah so how do you handle this ch- difficult situation say somebody comes to you and tells you their experience what they saw what they felt what they think and they ask you to research it and you do and you can't find any historical basis for what they're experiencing. Like, do you, you know, it happens people because it's sometimes it can be perception. Sometimes it can be people's minds, you know, it can be various things, but you know, if somebody is certain or a psychic told him there was a murder here and that explains why I see what I see, you look into it and there's no record of any of that. You ever have that happen? Yes, this happened. So I had a friend that used to work at the Canyon Rose Suites and claimed that this one particular room was haunted and people saw they had visions in this room and whatnot. And so we did, um, we used to do like a paranormal and ghost hunting weekend where guests would come in, we would train them how to do a ghost hunt. They would stay at the haunted location and hunt the ghosts. And it was really fun. So we decided to do one there to figure out, hey, what's who's haunting the Canyon Rose? So the one particular room that was uh, the one that everyone had these weird visions in had a really, really high EMF reading. And if you looked out the window, there was one of those electrical boxes on a telephone pole right out the window, like a transformer. Okay. And there are people who are sensitive to high EMF frequencies. 
and it can cause them to have um, delusions. They will see things that aren't really there. Mm -hmm. They will hear things that aren't really there. And, and I, I believe that, no, it wasn't haunted. It's not haunted. It was simply people mm -hmm. having a reaction to the high EMF that was right outside their window that they were sleeping in. Uh, so, yeah. So I, I mean, I'll tell people the truth. I'll be like, yeah, I don't know anything about it. I did research. I can't find anything about it. That doesn't mean it's not haunted because you could bring an object into your house that's haunted. You yourself can be haunted. I have a little girl ghost that everyone, everyone who's sensitive sees her around me and describes her I the remember same you way. talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so a building doesn't necessarily have to house the ghost. The ghost can be attached to a person, an object, a pet. I mean, I don't know what, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the structure that you see the ghost in. You know, that totally makes sense. And I have heard of what you were describing. People super sensitive to EMF can have those hallucinations and auditory hallucinations as well. And somebody else walking in the room may feel nothing, see nothing, have no experience. Mm -hmm. um, people I find often identify by their experiences though. And without their experience, they, you know, might doubt themselves or, you know, not feel so good about things. So I know it's a delicate balance of, you know, expressing that, you know, you believe that they experienced what they experienced, but then when you find that there's no factual basis, but still it doesn't mean it didn't have, something didn't happen to them. That's important and impactful. Yeah. Yes, correct. You don't want to, uh, poo poo what no. they experience because to them it's extremely real and it could be real. I just, right. if you, there's only so much you can do. Do you know, there's only so much you can do to, to uh, justify or well, not justify. What's the word I'm looking for? It's too early. Explain away. I think I know what you're getting at. And, you know, I had a mediumship teacher one time explain something to me that made real, real sense. She's like, never take something away from someone mm -hmm. without giving something back. But basically you don't need to diminish someone's experience. There's no point. Right. Um, but that's why I think it's a delicate situation. People are like eager to find a, a reason and yeah. you don't come up with one. It's like, eh, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I also <laughs> wanted to ask you at what point in your life did you realize the value of doing good research? Have you always done it or did you get sick and tired of reading other people's stuff that you thought wasn't researched? Well, Let's give me the dirty here. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer that because like I said before, I like to collect people's firsthand accounts and the research I do simply backs up or tries to back up what they experienced. Okay. Does no, that's cool. Does that make sense? That totally does. So it's not like you read some things and thought, hmm, I think I could do this better or, oh, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to go look into this. You simply go from, I heard a story and now I'm going to look into it. Yes. Okay. Okay. No, that makes great sense. Have you always been one who likes to dig deep in anything and kind of learn about it? Not on my computer. Hold on. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I needed, I needed coffee. <laughs> Coffee's a good thing, definitely. Sweetums, honey. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! Shh. I know, honey. I know you can't help it. Shh. Um, do I like to dig deep on stuff like that? You know, you know what I do is like. I get really interested in one thing and I will follow that road as long as it takes. And when I get bored, I'm like, okay. Or when I think I've mastered it, I'm like, okay, on to the next thing. So 
I am like all of, like, you know, I do like artwork on the side and I am all over the place with my art. Like sometimes I'll, I'll do polymer clay. Sometimes I'll sew, sometimes I'll paint, sometimes I'll do digital stuff. And it's because I get bored in one medium. And so then I go to the next. And I think that's um, the way I approach the paranormal research is that I'll take it as far as I can. And when I think I found all the answers, I'm just going to, you know, research something else now. I love that. I, I, you know, it's funny. I just wrote (laughs) or scripted kind of an episode for the show all about that. Like finding seriously, I can't wait to record it because it's all about, you know, you find one interest, and you take it as far as you want to go. And then you stop and you do something else and how to some people that's a negative. And in my life, I've been called a quitter because I try a lot of things. Yeah. I enjoy a lot of things, but I see the value in that. So I'm totally, totally understanding what you're saying. Um, mm-hmm. and I've seen some of your social media posts about that. And I think I can totally relate to her. Yeah. You know, I'm into oh, yeah. this for like, you know, like I studied yoga for like two years straight. And I was doing yoga like twice a day and it's all I wanted to do. And then I went somewhere else and then I went yeah. somewhere else. It's just, you know, you do, it doesn't mean you give up those things or you no longer like them. You're just moving on to the next thing, right? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So for, I think I know your answer, but for people just jumping in to Paranormal research, again, not necessarily investigating, but research of the haunted locations. What would be your number one tip for them? Talk to people, talk to people, talk to people. Talk to as many people as you can, get as many stories as you can. Um, I I think firsthand accounts are gold. That's that's my go-to. So yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. Talk to people. I love that. And I think by doing that also, you give, you give those people a voice, you make them feel important and you validate their experiences. So you're not only helping yourself with the investigation or the research, but you're also helping those people who have a story to share. Right. And they usually, if it's a ghost story, they love to share it. They do. Yeah. So with that, I'm not that we're ending right now because I could just talk to you all day, but, um, do you have any new books in the works or anything you're doing with this kind of stuff right now? Oh, so my first book, the publishing company wanted to me, wanted me to revise it. I revised it. I sent it back to them. It was, it's supposed to be out this fall of 2023, the revised version. Uh, and I don't know where it is right now. I really need to call them and be like, okay, are we on schedule? What's going on? Because I think I wrote an extra, I want to say like another, like, I want to say like 50 pages or so. Wow. There's so many new stories added and, um, expansions on the stories that are already in the book. And so I really want, I really want them to get on the ball and publish it because I'm very excited, you know, to, for them to re-release it. And other than that, not so much. I'm working on a, uh, a short story inspired by my next door neighbor's cat, but that's not, that doesn't have anything to do with, (laughs) with ghosts. It's just, you know, one of those things I've been wanting to that's been in my brain that I want to write down. So how fun. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I believe everything comes from spirit. Like we're guided to do the things we're guided to do because we're being nudged from the other side. So right. I think it all has to do with ghosts. So a story about your neighbor's cat. That sounds fun. I'll be one of your first <laughs> readers if you let me, cause that would be exciting to read. I love cats and I love stories. <laughs> Wow. Any more fun trips coming up? Because like I said, you do the coolest stuff. Um, What are you and Jimmy doing next? Well, my aunt and I, this is kind of funny. My grandmother passed away a few years ago, but her 
best friend is still alive. She's like over a hundred years old. Wow. And I know. And she lives in Florida. And so, uh, my aunt and I, uh, we go on a yearly trip to Scottsdale for my aunt's birthday. And this last year she said, do you want to come with me to go visit Fran in Florida? And I said, yes. And so we're going to go visit Fran in, you know, her assisted living home. And then we're going to Key West. Oh, wow. And I told my Aunt Enid, I said, the only thing I want to do besides hunt for beach treasures, because that's my other favorite thing to do is to, you know, find sea glass and seashells and beach treasures, is I want to go to Key West and do the ghost tour. <gasps> so. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Well, that's the next thing. And when? Then, when are you going? Uh, in March. March. Did you already say that? I'm sorry if you already said that. I was just too I wrapped don't know. up. Okay. March. I don't know. Oh it's, gosh, it's, so that's coming up quick. Yeah. So that's the next trip. And then I'm trying to think. I don't know if we have anything planned. Actually, after um, after I stop talking to you, I am going next door to my next door neighbor and her and I are planning a trip to Egypt. Oh my goodness. Wow. Fun. Yeah. For 2024. So, uh, we're doing that with national geographic. Oh my gosh. I know. Okay. Well, I want to know about that, but I want to back up and ask, because (laughs) I know you're the ghost tour master. What is it about the Key West ghost tour that has you excited to go? Because I don't know this and you know, it could be something else I'm going to add to my list. So the owner of the tour, so I had, there was a local in Bisbee. His name was Chuck. He was uh, a fellow business owner and he moved here from Key West and he uh, was friends with the guy that owned the ghost tours in Key West. So I just always wanted to go and I'm trying to think, I don't think I've ever done a ghost tour in a beach community i'm thinking well besides like salem but that's not really like beach not the beach like we're thinking yeah 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 so uh i am expecting that there's going to be different types of stories than i'm used to i'm hoping for like pirate pirate ghosts (laughs) there's going to be fun stories in florida yeah and i really oh my god what's the other one i'm thinking of Oh my God. What's the other city in Florida that is infamous for being haunted? And it has the, the lighthouse. St. Augustine. St. Augustine. That's it. Are you going there too? No, one day I will. One day that's, that's on my bucket list to do. Oh my gosh. Well, after you get back from, um, Key West, you know, we're going to have to talk again. (laughs) If your ghost tour was fun and you find some cool stuff, I'm going to have to know about it. I will definitely, and I'll be posting, you know, I, I know, I know I'll steal your little videos and repost them because they're so fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Egypt, what are you doing in Egypt? Um, we're doing like this whole like tour of Egypt and, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be amazing. Okay. So I'm very curious, you know, how the Egyptians, um, mummified. Yes, yes, yes. And, and. Uh, and then we, you know, it, 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 it fascinates me how they, uh, buried their dead and, and I want to know if there are ghosts there. Yes. You know, like, okay. So this is a little know. ghosty backed trip, right? I was like, well, are you just taking the trip just to take the trip? Cause it's historical and cool. Or do you have a little underlying ghost well, connection? I am I am fascinated with mummies and the rituals behind them. Oh god, where there is a fabulous mummy museum in California and if Jimmy was sitting here he'd be able to tell me exactly where it is and we I saw a don't cool remember. mummy exhibit in Los Angeles. We went to the Natural History Museum while they were having a special um Mm. Oh my God. Why did I just lose the word exhibit? <laughs> um, but I don't think it was permanent. So I don't know if it's the one you're talking about, but we saw some fantastic mummies there. No, this is a permanent like museum oh. dedicated to mummies. 
Wow. And anyways, okay. It was fascinating. And they had mummified cats and and just and real mummies, you know, tons of real mummies. And the just the ritual behind it and what and they thought that giving them all of these material objects would help them in the afterlife. And well, what you know, in the afterlife, did they descend to the afterlife? Or are they still here? Like and 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 what part do we play now in digging up and researching <gasps> their mummies? Right? It's like they did all this stuff and then we dig them up and we're like studying them and should we just let them stay there? Mm-hmm. And you know that feels the, wrong to me to research on them. <laughs> yeah, I know me too. And I, you know, I'm torn. <laughs> and you know, the uh King Tut and the curse of King Tut, and it's just it's cool. It's fa- it fascinates me. Like I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> that is going to be so interesting. How are you going to document your trip? What are you going to do? Uh, like journal, videos. video, all of it videos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And, uh, Oh my gosh, my yeah. mind is reeling right now. I'm like, all these thoughts are happening. <laughs> oh my god. We can do another podcast. You have- Yes, yes. And we could put some snippets of your videos in there. And I can't wait to hear what that was like. Oh my gosh. I'm going to live vicariously through you. All right, Renee. So this has been super fun. I'm so glad that we actually did talk paranormal research, but honestly, I'm excited. We talked about all the other fun stuff, your upcoming (laughs) trips, um, the coffin cross country road trip. I swear next time I see you, can I ride around in your hearse, please? Oh my God. Yes. Just give me a heads up. Okay. You got to take me for a ride in the hearse because oh. that will be the highlight of my life. I'm pretty we, sure. Okay. So we have my hearse, which is a mid nineties. And then we have Jimmy's hearse, <gasps> which, okay. He's going to kill me if I get it wrong, but I believe it's a 64 Cadillac ambulance hearse combo. Oh my God. No offense, Renee, but we got to ride around in Jimmy's. Do you think Jimmy would take me for a ride? Oh, he that's he lives. He lives to take people for rides in this car. And there's like a back seat because it was oh. an ambulance. So they needed a seat for like the nurse and the doctor or whatever. And so there's like a whole back seat and there's a gurney in the back. It's rad. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to come to Bisbee just for that. I'm supposed to be in Bisbee at the end of April. Not 100 percent sure, but another Copper Queen event. Um, So I'm still trying to work out the family logistics of being there for four days. Cause that's kind of nuts when you know what kind of family I have. Um, can they come with you? Are you high? <laughs> Do you know how? N- no, for four okay. days. Oh my God. My youngest is six. No, no, mm. no. Mom needs to like, I could not work if that were the case. I couldn't podcast. I couldn't do mediumship because I'd be momming. So no, oh, okay. but if I come in April, I hope we can set up, maybe we can go to dinner and ride around in the hearse or something. If you can make time for me. (laughs) Absolutely. Just give me a heads up so I can make sure that I can make time for you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Renee, before we go, is there anything you want to add? Do you, I'll always put it in the show notes, but do you want to put anything about the ghost tour um, or how people can reach you, the name of your books, anything like that? So our website is oldbisbeeghosttour.com. And you can get all the information about our tours there. We do them seven nights a week. And the uh, my two books are Southern Arizona's Most Haunted. And that is the one that they are revising. I believe you might be able to get copies on Amazon still. I can't find it. Really? No. So if you find it, send me a link because I couldn't find it. And it could totally be oh. me. Okay. I will. I might have a... a a copy sitting here. If I do, I will send it to you. Okay. If I have an extra copy, because I have to keep, you know, one for myself. Of course. And an extra one, I will send it to you. Uh, and then my uh, other book is Paranormal Arizona. And that book talks about ghost stories, um, as well as like Chupacabra, Bigfoot, UFOs. I love that, you know, cryptozoology stuff and all that cool stuff. So, um, yeah, 
uh, I my you can buy my artwork and clothesline at sweetmidnight.com. I also make really cool coffin bags and cool so fun. Halloween, yeah, Halloweeny type stuff. And I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I'm so busy. I know you do so much cool stuff. Seriously. I watch you and I'm like, amazed, 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 amazed. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Well, cool. I will put all of that in the notes and um, links so people can find the ghost tour and email you if they want to get a hold of you. And I thank you again so, so, so much for being here with me. You're the best. You're and welcome. I love talking to you. And I can't wait to have you back. Yay. Yay. I can't wait to be back. Thank you for joining me here again this week on All Is Not Lost. I always appreciate having you here. I really hope you enjoyed hearing from Renee again. This is certainly not the last time she will join us on the show. And as always, I will post Renee's details in the show notes. But until then, if you'd like to connect with Renee, please visit oldbisbeeghosttour.com and be sure to book a tour the next time you're in Arizona. You'll be so happy you did. I know you have a choice of how you spend your time and it's not lost on me that you choose to spend your time here. If you're enjoying the show, please remember to subscribe and to share it with a friend. If you'd like more information about me or to book a reading or a private mentoring session, please visit all is not lost podcast.com and click booking and inquiries. If you have an idea for a show topic or you just want to connect, please reach out on social media or via email at allisnotlostpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you again, and I will see you next week.